How you doing guys? W.F. White here, Soul Refuge, so good to see you. Pope Francis continues his unity push with twisted interpretation on baptism. I'll just give you some highlights from this written article that I have up there on my blog, Soul Refuge. So, you know what happened, folks? The Pope came out with a statement. Let me read it. Referring to the Second Vatican Council document of Unitatis Red Integratio, the Pope affirmed that baptism establishes a sacramental bond of unity which links all who have been reborn by it. So he's he's talking about baptism, okay? And uh, what I want you to see, folks, is that the baptism of Rome is totally different than uh, the biblical baptism. So he, he's saying here that uh, baptism unites us all, Protestants, Orthodox, Roman Catholics, we're all one. You see, this is that unity, folks. Rome wants everyone under their umbrella with the Pope at the head. Don't ever forget that. I'll say it again. Rome wants everyone to be under their umbrella with the Pope at the head. Don't ever forget that. So uh, here's another uh, thing. So he's talking about baptism. And what I did here, I have a little picture up here uh, of two ladies, an older picture and they have a plastic baby doll in, in a tub of water. And I, I just put that up there to show you folks. Um, you could take a plastic baby doll, sprinkle some water on that baby doll's head. It'll have the same effect. Uh, the, the, the baby doll obviously can't feel the water. And, and when you're baptized as an infant, folks, there's no spiritual uh, connection that's taken place between that infant and Almighty God. And yet the Roman church teaches that's how you're born again and that's how you come into the kingdom of God. That's their teaching. So so here you have the Pope saying we're united by baptism and I'm, I'm a born again Christian. I know that, that that's not how you come to become born again. So I, I, I know that. <laughs> so this is why I'm doing this teaching here. Now, you know, it's it's amazing to me, folks, what is going on. Now, Here's the Pope saying we're united by baptism, yet if you don't believe what they teach regarding baptism, they put you under a curse, several curses, in fact, on baptism. Here's just one of them, canon number 13 from the Council of Trent, upheld by Vatican II. In other words, this is on the books today in the year 2016. Canon number 13, if anyone saith that little children, for that they have not actual faith, are not, after having received baptism to be reckoned, amongst the faithful, and that for this cause they are to be rebaptized when they have attained to years of discretion, or that it is better that the baptism of such be omitted than that while not believing by their own act, they should be baptized in the faith alone of the church, let them be anathema. Make a long story short, basically what they're saying is if you don't believe in their infant baptism, that that, that child becomes part of the kingdom of God, that they are in fact reborn. That's basically what they're saying. And that they become reckoned amongst the faithful. Okay, that's talking about becoming a believer. If you don't believe that, folks, they say, let you be a curse. No, I don't believe that. And so I am a curse according to them. And their curses mean nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. Why? They mean nothing to Almighty God. These are man-made traditions. These are the commandments of men and nothing else. Don't ever forget that. So it's kind of funny when you have the Pope uh, with his push for unity, and most people have no idea about these things. That's why I bring these videos out. I figure, folks, you know, maybe one or two people, they, they, they might see this and, and it might click. You see, don't forget the words of Jesus Christ. He said, narrow is the way and straight and few to be that find it. Broad is the road to destruction and many there be that go in there at. So, so most people are on the road to destruction, basically plain and simple folks. Most people are on the road to hell, have no idea that they are. They will fight you tooth and nail. They, they will tell you they're not. Well, there's nothing I can do. This is what the word of God declares, folks. It's your battle's not with me. Your battle is with the Lord. So, uh, I, you know, I'm not, as I said, I'm just going to give you some parts of this blog. I encourage you to, to read the article because it would take very long. So at one point in time, folks, people like myself, what they were called heretics. And deep down inside, that's what they do think of people like me, uh, heretics. But 
At Vatican II, we became known as separated brethren, you know, little schisms, but we all need to come back to Mother Church. That, that's the way they're thinking is, that's what Vatican II, this is the push for unity. You see, as I said before, everybody under the umbrella of Rome with the Pope as the head. Don't ever forget that. That's what's going on in the world uh, right now, folks. In fact, uh, next year, that's 2017, October uh, 31st, that's the 500th anniversary of uh, Martin Luther nailing the 95 Thesis uh, to the door at Wittenberg over in Germany. So what does that mean? Well, he was fighting against the corruption in the Roman church regarding indulgences and many other things. So, so uh, you, you, you're seeing a push now to have on that day a, a unity. I mean, it's gross, folks. A unity, and basically we, we, we've settled the differences. Don't believe it for a second, folks. So nothing's been settled. Unless that man repents of the whole system, they, those garments would come flying off of them. Uh, then you'd see true unity, folks, in Christ, but not before. So as a former Roman Catholic, I can uh, testify to the Mother Church and the Pope, Mama, I'm not coming home because I met the real Jesus Christ. I've been born again of the Spirit. My sins have been paid for at the cross. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I know the real Jesus Christ. I'm not coming home, Mama Church. So uh, if, if you're a former Roman Catholic, I encourage you to speak out. If you're a Roman Catholic listening, I encourage you to search the scriptures for yourself. Once you pass through the door, folks, that door of death, you're going to find out there is no purgatory. Don't exist. Nobody is going to be praying for you. Nobody's going to have masses said for you to help you. It's either heaven or hell. It's either salvation or damnation. Then I give a quote, which I've often done, of Keith Green. And in many things he said, you know, he basically said, Keith, uh, he said regarding Rome, it's not just a cult. He said it's an empire. And he's very uh, well-versed in the way he... Uh, says that he says with its own ruler its own laws and its own subjects the empire speaking of rome has no borders it encompasses the globe with its eye on every person who does not vow allegiance it calls the members of other faiths separated brethren and has as its goal the eventual bringing together of everyone under its flag same thing i've been telling you folks uh, I'm, I'm i'm speaking the very same thing Listen to what he says. I know that many will not be convinced or moved by this article or any of the others to make such a conclusion. They are impressed by what they've heard about recent stirrings among the Catholics in a charismatic renewal. Many evangelicals, especially charismatics, have been thrilled by the reports of Catholics speaking in tongues, dancing in the spirit, having nights of joy and praise, even attending charismatic masses. Let me stop there. I did those things. I, 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 I tasted of that charismatic uh, renewal. I went to those charismatic, quote, healing masses. I did that stuff. I, I was involved with people who, who used to go to Medjugorje to, um, they wanted to see apparitions of, of Mary uh, over in uh, what was then known as Yugoslavia. And they, they would come and say that their rosary beads, the chain that held the beads, it changed colors from silver to gold. And I was like, wow, this is totally awesome. But then, you know, then I got saved and I realized what I was dealing with. Uh, you're dealing with spiritism, folks. It's, it's the occult. That's It's plain and simple. So uh, Keith goes on to say, mouths that used to speak out boldly against the Church of Rome have been quieted by the times. It no longer is in vogue to speak of the Pope as the Antichrist or the Catholic Church is the whore of Babylon. Now Protestants unwittingly believe that our differences are not so great. Ah, that is just what she needs us to think. Listen to what he says here. I've never completely understood why God led me to write these articles, speaking of the Catholic Chronicles, that which he wrote, but it becomes more clear with each day of study and each page of research, never has something so black and wicked gotten away with appearance so holy and mysteriously beautiful for so long. Now, Keith wrote that. I have a copy of those uh, Catholic Chronicles throughout a print, but he wrote that back in 81, I think it was. So you're talking a long time. They're no longer in print, folks. Powerful expose on the Roman Catholic Church. Compare that to what you are hearing in the land today from people 
like James Robeson, uh, Rick Warren, the man who wrote The Purpose Driven Life. I mean, he, he referred to the Pope, Pope Francis, as our Pope. Lord have mercy. Our Pope. Folks, there were 500 years uh, that, that, that Rome was dealing with, with people like me, Christians, who were tortured, burned at the stake, killed by the millions probably. That's what they say. All of this stuff is covered up. So what, I, what I'm telling you today, folks, is that that church preaches the exact same doctrines today in the year 2016 as they did back then. That's why I warn you, folks, hear me. So many, many compromises. I've spoken many times, Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, Robeson, uh, as I said, you have Rick Warren, you had TBN, they were selling all sorts. They sold rosary beads, all Catholic trinkets on their website. I, 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 in fact, I have a recording of that. It's, it's amazing. It's totally amazing what is going on. And then what I do in this blog here, I, I quote from the, the book of Acts with that man from Ethiopia, how he was genuinely born again of the Spirit, genuinely saved. He got baptized. And, and I'll give you an example of what happened. The Holy Spirit used a man named Philip. He said, look, go this, come pull, pull next to this chariot where this man is sitting. The man was reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 53. And, and then the Lord used Philip to minister to him. Uh, and, and let me read part of it here. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Philip ran thither to him, heard him read the prophet Isaiah, Esaias in the King James, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So here this man desired to know what was going on. The Lord saw that. This is beautiful. I love this. The Lord takes this man... Uh, Philip, the Spirit of God speaks to him, which he still does today, by the way, to people. And, and now Philip obeys the Spirit, goes and starts to minister. And it says the place of the scripture w which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb or silent before his shearer. So opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Let me explain what took place here. Here's the man he's, he's, he's reading. And they had scrolls in those days, so I don't know exactly how he had this uh, read. He's reading from the prophet Isaiah chapter 53, the part where there's a lamb uh, that is silent. He didn't open his mouth. And, and basically, this is a prophecy of the death of Jesus Christ 700 years, folks, before it actually happened. This is awesome. Awesome. And so now the man says, uh, he, he asked Philip, he says, now, who is this talking about? Is, is, this, is the prophet Isaiah talking about himself or is he referring to somebody else? And at that point, Philip preached Jesus to him. That's it. You get saved, folks, this is what comes out of your mouth. The testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Not Mary. I'm not going to tell you to go to the Magisterium or the Vatican or you need this. No. You got the Holy Ghost. He will guide you into all truth, folks. It will burn in your heart. That's true salvation. That's true new birth. So what happened to men? It says they went on their way came, and they came to a certain water and the eunuch said, see, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? The man wanted to be baptized and look what takes place. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Let me stop right there. Do you see the, the, the proper uh, way, folks? The man wanted to be baptized. He sees a body of water and he says, what hinders me? I could be baptized right here. And, and Philip said, here's the deal. If you believe that Jesus Christ, you see that? He says, it, no, l let me read it. If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ 
is the Son of God. Now, we, we established the fact he was reading Isaiah 53, folks, okay? I believe it was verses 7 and 8 from that chapter. He's reading that. He already knows that, that, that he went and he, he died. He died for our sins, folks. And this man wanted to know. He was searching for the truth. And, and he says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's testifying to the deity of Christ. And this is where the spiritual connection took place. Philip did his job, baptized him. He agreed this, is, this man can be baptized. It says, when they were both come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuchs saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Beautiful, beautiful portion of scripture. The man got saved. He was baptized. Okay. He was, the, 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 the transaction took place before he went into the water, folks. When I was baptized as an adult, I was already saved. I was born again. I mean, the, the words were jumping off the page at me. I wanted to be baptized. It was a day of joy. It was a great, great wonderful day for me when I was baptized. But you see, something took place. I knew what was taking place when I, I knew the reason why I was being baptized, okay? You're going down into the water. It's like your old man is dying. That's the purpose. You're going down full immersion in the water. You get back up. It's a type of the resurrection. You are now risen with Jesus Christ. You are co-joined with Jesus Christ. That's true salvation. That's true baptism. T totally diametrically opposed to the infant baptism. You see a priest taking those little wand with water, holy water, and putting it on the head of an infant, folks. That is not baptism according to the word of God. So therefore the Pope saying baptism unites us, not true. Twisting the scripture. Twisting the scripture. So uh, let me close it here, folks, with some um, things that would which really unite us. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians three twenty six and 29. And, um, you know, I forgot to tell you, after he baptized, look what happened. It was a miracle took place. Uh, that man, the Ethiopian eunuch who was saved and baptized, all of a sudden he didn't see Philip anymore. What happened? A miracle took place. Basically, the, the Lord transported that man and he was found in other cities. What was he doing? Was, it, was he taking a little wand and putting it over? No, he was preaching the gospel, folks. This is how people get saved. It is, it is under the sound of the word of God. That's how people get saved. The, the, the gospel goes forth, preach repentance and forgiveness of sins in my name. That's the beauty. The invitation goes to all. It goes to Jew. It goes to Gentile. We're all equal, folks. No special group of people above or below. No lower group all one, all equally sinners, all invited to come, all have the opportunity to be saved, all have the opportunity to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, then you can say, hey man, I, you know, I, I want to be baptized. Glory to God. And you should be, by the way. You're making a public statement that, that, you, that you, you are a believer. That's what the man did. That's what Philip did. He says, I want to. I want to proclaim Christ. And that's what he did. So, uh, Colossians 3, 1, 1 to 4, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. You're baptized, folks. You die. Okay, you're risen with Christ, you're hid. Look what it says, you're risen with him. Your life is hid with Christ, oh glory to God. You are hidden in Jesus Christ, hallelujah. It's like, you know, I have a little pouch here. It's like, let's say this is Christ. In you go, folks, glory to God. In you go, you're hidden with him. He loves you. He died for you. And, and by that testimony, folks, you, you're saying, man, my life is hid with Christ. You're inside, glory to God.
So uh, let me end it here. Romans 10, verses 10 to 13. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. Whoever you are listening right now to this video, I don't care who you are, where you live, what color your skin is, what language you speak, important that you know in and of yourself you cannot save yourself. There's something in you right now, you know I'm telling you the truth, and that's the Holy Ghost imparting upon you. He's trying to get your attention. to. I don't like that word, imparting, but, but he's moving upon you to listen to what you hear, not because I'm anything special, okay? It's the Word of God that I preach. In the sight of God, you're ungodly, just as I was, ungodly. But the good news, folks, is that Christ died for the ungodly. That's the truth. So, so you have a choice. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, so you, you, you recognize, folks, that you're on the road to destruction. As I said before, you are on the road to hell. There's no question about it. I was on the road to hell. If I didn't turn to the Lord, I would have gone to hell. There's no question about it. I trusted the Lord. I recognized, hey, man, I'm hopping in on this deal. It's, it's, it's too good to be true, it almost seems. But folks, when I was born again, I was like, Lord, have mercy. This thing is real. And only the Holy Spirit can do that. So what I'm trying to say, folks, you can go to church and mean well and do some good things and, and, and receive your sacraments as a Catholic, uh, we learned we, we were the only church with seven sacraments. And, and you try to do the best you can. And hopefully you're, you're hoping like the, the, the scales of justice. You, you hope that your, your good deeds perhaps outweigh your bad deeds. And on the day of judgment, the Lord's going to say, come on in. Come on down like the Price is Right TV show or something. It don't work that way. Here's the deal. You, you, you're lost. And it's one thing that can wash away your sins, and, and it's the blood of Jesus Christ. And the, the blood of Jesus Christ is the only thing that will justify you before a holy God. And it's a matter of calling upon the Lord and saying, Lord, save me. Save me. I want to be saved. I want to be washed by your blood. I want to be born again of the Spirit. That's real, folks. And that's how a person comes into the kingdom of God. Then you are truly part of the kingdom. And folks, all over the world, Every nation, America, South America, Russia, England, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, no matter where you go, people every day are calling upon the Lord for salvation. And they come into the kingdom. I don't know who they are, but one day we will see people from every part of this globe, folks, every tongue, every race, every color. They came in and one will get the glory. What's his name? His name is Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. That's the good news. No better news. Like great news is better. That you, the wretch, can be saved. And that's the love of God. God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but of everlasting life. Folks, you see the world crumbling before your eyes. You, you read the news, you turn on your television, you are seeing things that are absolutely insane. And, and deep in your heart, you're saying, this is madness. It's getting worse by the day. And, 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 and the hour is very late. Folks, when you have Christ, it's the only thing that matters. I'm going to leave it right there. Be blessed.